I said, it really is too bad that the inauguration was so great, yeah. but that poem was, the, what, what disturbs me, and here's something that might be very interesting for the Society of Critical Exchange, is what does it mean that we have a society that would consider that a poem? Mm. And it's our fault, partly. It's the fault of academics. It's the fault of my husband, who's a physician, mm. who's a cardiologist, but who reads a lot, not so much poetry, he tends to read more other things, let's say, but he really knows his way around. Let's say Ulysses and he knows Baudelaire, you know, you know so he, he heard that and he said, that's not a poem at all, is it? I said, no, in fact, I would call that not a poem. There's nothing about it that meets anybody's criteria for poetry. It has no sense of rhythm, mm -hmm. it has no repetition, it has no, not only not meter, but no kind of structure. Or, or any kind of formal basis. Its language is completely pedestrian and literal. So, I mean, what makes it a poem? I don't know. I don't think it was a poem. But what is? But I'm not even interested in the poem. What I'm interested in is that people think she's a poet. What does that mean? Huh. And that's that poetry is so downgraded by our society. It is. It has such a low status. That's what it means. I've read that already in the paper in a few places. What it means is it has such a low status that all people want from a poem in that general way is something with a little uplift yeah. that sounds good, a little moral statement, serious, and then everybody gets their church look. You know, they start looking as if they're in church and they sort of sit with their hands folded. Oh, let's listen to the poem. Oh, good. You know, and then that's over. Now we can talk about something that matters, you know. And it, it, they have downgraded poetry so badly, but that's the fault of things like the Poetry Society of America, mm -hmm. the general academic teaching of poetry, which is very bad, and the general outlook on poetry, which is just that it doesn't matter. There's nothing at stake. Mm -hmm. And that is a fascinating topic that I'm very interested in topics of that sort, intertextual topics or, or topics of literary or historiography in a way. What does it mean that we have downgraded poetry, which should be the greatest of the literary arts and always was mm -hmm. for thousands of years in a way? What does it mean that we have downgraded it to that level? And yet I wouldn't want to be totally pessimistic because there's a lot of wonderful stuff going on in poetry, just not in the establishment. The establishment is deadly. The poetry establishment is deadly. Just now when I was getting dressed this morning, I, uh, I was just looking at my YouTube thing, and, I, um, and there was Jim Lehrer, or not Jim Lehrer, but one of the people on the Lehrer News Hour doing an interview with Elizabeth Alexander. Oh. They replayed it from right before the the inauguration and what does it mean this and how do you feel about that and she is a professor at Yale you mm -hmm. know she does well I mean I would think she herself would feel terrible about that poem but I don't know you know of anybody all, could have written it of all places she was on uh, Stephen Colbert show really last night and uh, um, she talked about it as being a, uh, a praise song well, it wasn't a song, and it would have, you know. And then so she. It's very pretentious and, and, to call Col it a song. And Colbert said, "Well, what is that?" <laughs> Essentially, and then so she tried to lay out uh, her her sense of what the genre of a praise song calls for. So in her in her sense, uh, she was performing a work that fit certain criteria. Men are doing the things they're doing. Women are doing the things they're doing. I mean, it was just so flat and so boring. Yeah. And everybody said, oh, you know, when does the poem begin? Greg Ulmer, you know who Greg Ulmer yeah. is? Yeah, yeah he's a good theorist. Greg Ulmer wrote a note on Facebook saying, each word was dropped on the floor, mm -hmm. and you thought maybe somebody will come and pick up the pieces and put them together, but nobody ever did. That's what he wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good comment. But that's a sad comment, is the place of poetry in the society. Huh. And that's um, and, and it's equivocal. It's not that nobody reads poetry or nobody cares, because the poetry sites like Ron Silliman's blog, those things are huge. They get millions of people hmm. on those blogs. And, and so there are plenty of people who do care. Hmm. But it's just that the general public attitude toward poetry is so bad. That's <laughs> something I always want to do something about. You know, I work hard at that in some ways because there's no reason why the public should feel that way. All you have to do is have better, you know, have it taught better and present it better and all that. But I think what happened to poetry and literary things in general is that in the age of Paul de Man, hmm. um, where after you had great things written on poetry, but poetry was always being used as an example. Hmm. One poem would be used as an example of a theory. Mm -hmm the Lucy poem or something, you know, for, for Demand, for Derrida, again, three lines of something, for Lacan. And um, the effect of that is that everybody's only looking at the theory, not really paying any attention. You get that with Haldolin and Heidegger, you know, right. that 
people aren't interested in Huldah and they don't know any German, but okay, Heidegger talks about it, so it must be good, right. you know? And so then they're sort of talking about that, but they're never getting at the poetry at all. And so we sort of need a kind of rethinking of what is poetry anyway, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and um, is, how can is we this talk where about the, it? Is this where the campaign for Marjorie Perloff as Poet Laureate begins? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since I've never written a poem, I know. <laughs> I know. I get lots of things, though, that think I'm a poet that ask people to say, you know, but I think I could have done as well as What's Your Name the other day. That I really have to say. We could have done it, you know. It would have been great. But I think that that's actually was very depressing because Obama is such a wonderful writer. Well, I'm going to talk about him today. Yeah. He really is. And, and a lot of people said jokingly, even the benediction was better than the poem. Mm -hmm. The benediction mm -hmm. that yellow will be mellow and you yeah, know blah blah yeah. blah it was stupid, but it was a little bit better than hers. Yeah. Nobody knew when hers was over because it just sort of stopped because it was just a little statement. It didn't really seem song of praise, you know, <sighs> very self conscious. Well, there is that whole and the more Ivy Leagues the school are, schools are, the more they cater to that kind of thing. It's really too mm -hmm. bad. At Yale, where you have the Yale Review and you have where she is and you have Sandy McClatchy. Yeah. Alfred Korn, they write that kind of poetry themselves, but nobody, re I mean, it's just a kind of establishment thing. I don't know how to describe it, you know? Speaking of, of, of establishment, uh, I, the few um, <laughs> words of praise I did here for it tried to connect it to Whitman uh, and Whitman's style mm -hmm. and, and sensibility. <laughs> but something has to be done. See, I've come around to that, again, historically speaking, and this is what I do feel Again, that the critical exchange should be doing, maybe a la Hayden White, I don't know, quite yeah. a la what, in a new way, that they have to be, free verse is now more than 100 years old, mm -hmm. and, and everything is written in free verse. It's hallmark cards, whatever you go, you know, it's there. So it has to now be deconstructed and come some other, in some other direction, because, the, because it's just no longer signifies freedom. Right. It no longer signifies any loosening up. It no longer signifies what it was originally supposed to signify for Whitman, which is social, um, some kind of opening up, mm -hmm. some kind of, of liberalization. And so it, it doesn't signify anything, it just signifies the norm. Mm. So that the way you can attack that norm is to do something totally um, other, you know, to do something that is may sound like a chant mm. or may be very formed. Have you ever heard anything by Christian Buck? Yes. Canadian? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what I, I think they should have had him do that. Yeah. He could have done a great inaugural poem. Yeah. Charles Bernstein could have done a great inaugural poem. Nate Mackey, I can think of lots of people who could have done something that would have sounded like something. Because poetry is also sound. Mm -hmm. And when it's so flat and so prosaic, it is now finally kind of hit bottom in that regard. And it'll go back the other way. I don't mean we're going to go back to iambic pentameter, mm -hmm. but, but there have to be some kind of sounding, I think, yeah. to make it meaningful. And then again, the theoretical question behind that is, would be, what does it mean? See, this is where I think theory can really come in without being even a sort of topic like tarot, whatever. Mm -hmm. That um, to theorize something like poetry, what does it mean to want to make it so flat and so prosaic? What does this really have to do with the external world today? Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's really completely out of step because now that you have everything digitized mm -hmm. and everything is already mediated, this kind of flatness doesn't go with that at all. So you could do theoretically and talk about Elizabeth Alexander's poem and show that in a way it's living in a world that doesn't exist by wanting to have this authentic statement about how people feel and what people are doing. There are no authentic statements like that today. I mean, everything is always mediated, always yeah. recycled, always used. You can move it around on the screen. All photographs are treated photographs that we see. Yeah. So what does it mean to try to have this authentic voice?